It's time for munching. And mating. In the Macrocystis, or Giant Kelp, with your host, Dr. Bill Bushing. One of the best things about my job is that when I go to the office, I don't have to wear a tie with my suit. Wetsuit, that is. In this episode, we will look at the impact on the marine environment of non-native algae invading California waters from other parts of the world due to global trade. Southern California's incredible kelp forests are home to a rich array of marine life. But in 2003, they were invaded by an alien seaweed from Asia. And everything changed. As a major port for Trans-Pacific shipping, Los Angeles has had several non-native algae introduced here, including Sargassum muticum or wireweed, which arrived in 1970, Undaria pinnatifida or wakami, that appeared in 2000, and Cholerpa taxifolia, that also arrived in 2000. Thanks to a rapid and effective response, that invasive, a plant used in home aquaria, was declared removed from the wild in 2005. Novelist John Fowles defined a weed as a plant out of place. A plant from Europe like broom, or an ornamental geranium in the wildlands of California is as much a weed as a native species in a home garden. This simple definition is easy for all to understand. Scientifically speaking, weedy species have the capacity for rapid growth and dispersal and can outcompete desired or native plants. A native species is one found in a region naturally that has evolved along with other members of that ecosystem to achieve a certain role or niche. A non-native species is one which has arrived in a region through human intervention and may lack herbivores that feed on it or other plants capable of coexisting with it. The latest alien invader, Sargassum horneri, was first collected from Long Beach Harbor in 2003. This alga is a native of Korea, Japan, and China as far south as Hong Kong. Based on DNA studies, it may have arrived on a commercial vessel coming from the Sato Inland Sea in Japan. It has no English common name, but the Japanese call it Akamoku. When it first appeared, two different species were recognized, Sargassum horneri and Sargassum philocynum. Scientists have now merged the two as Sargassum horneri. In April of 2006, three small populations of it were discovered on Catalina Island at Big Fisherman Cove, Cherry Cove, and Emerald Bay near the Isthmus. It was probably introduced there by commercial or pleasure boats coming over from the mainland. Within just a few years, the exotic sargassum had spread along the entire leeward coast of the island. It has also become established off Anacapa and San Clemente Islands, the Orange and San Diego County coasts, and down into northern Baja, with recent reports of it out on remote Guadalupe Island, 150 miles off the Baja coast. Immature specimens have flat, symmetrical, fern-like blades with notched tips. 
As the alga grows, it becomes loosely branched in a zigzag pattern, develops small air bladders, and may reach lengths of more than 20 feet. This alga's mode of reproduction makes it a very effective weedy invader. It matures early in life, has both male and female components on a single plant, and is capable of self-fertilization. Young plants grow from fertilized eggs located on the receptacles of mature plants. An annual species, Sargassum horneri completes its entire life cycle in less than a year. There may be overlapping generations in a single season. In Catalina waters, it appears in late summer or early fall, is well established by late fall, and dies out in the late spring. Growth of both immature plants and mature blades occurs over a wide range of light levels and temperatures from 50 to 77 Fahrenheit. The immature plants grew best at temperatures of 59 to 77 degrees, while high light levels and temperatures above 77 degrees were detrimental to mature plants. I could find no studies that looked at the effect of varying nutrient levels on growth. When it stops growing and dies, the plant becomes heavily encrusted. Fragments break off and the entire plant may drift away. Researchers have found that the biomass of beach drift material from this alga at sites like Newport Beach may be second only to that of our native giant kelp. Some have expressed concern that drifting sargassum containing reproductive products may end up colonizing new locations and thus spread the infestation. They believe that this may be the way it is dispersing, especially along the mainland coast in Catalina. Over short distances this seems quite likely. However, studies of drifting plants off Asian coasts detected little genetic exchange between populations due to drift, and concluded it was not a successful method of colonizing new locations over distance. The discovery of the species at remote Guadalupe Island may be a result of dispersal by boat. Although this alga also forms dense beds in its native regions, it is partly kept in check there by sea urchins, abalone, and other invertebrates that graze on the young plants. And due to harvesting by humans for fertilizer, and livestock feed. A recent report from biologist Nancy Caruso indicates abalone from our waters will eat it too. In Catalina waters it grows so thick it outcompetes the native algae for substrate, light, and nutrients, forming a virtual monoculture like one might see in a field of wheat or corn. Biodiversity at these sites plummets. Even our giant kelp is affected since the sargassum takes early advantage of available nutrients and can quickly overshade the young microscopic stages of our native kelp or tear off the blades or even rip out young plants. As you can see from the barren rock left after the sargassum dies off, some native algae will grow along the vertical edge of the rock where the sargassum doesn't recruit. Algae colonizing the barren upper surfaces must now compete for nutrients with the phytoplankton that bloom this time of year as day length increases and the waters warm. One interesting observation I made was the appearance of tiny single-bladed giant kelp plants growing directly on the stipes of the dying sargassum. This undoubtedly is a result of less substrate available for colonization until the invasive species completely dies out. Unfortunately, these giant kelp plants drift away with the dead sargassum and are unable to establish at the site. By crowding out the native seaweeds, it removes food sources for our local invertebrates and fish. Our native species did not evolve with and adapt to this non-native alga. Most do not appear to feed on the sargassum 
because it produces toxins known as polyphenols. Only after the sargassum begins to die and production of the toxins stops do we see native species like Garibaldi, kelp surf perch, Senorita, Opali, and others feeding in it, and then mostly on the invertebrates that encrust the sargassum's blades. I have observed giant kelpfish nesting in the thick sargassum, but this is probably because the native algae they normally nest in have been crowded out. I have also noticed that lobster often frequent the vertical rocky walls which are free of the sargassum, perhaps because it is too thick on the flat bottom for them to scavenge and find food. The winter of 2010 to 2011 provided an interesting insight into the balance between sargassum horneri and our native algal species. The water during summer had been unusually cool, with average temperatures during August and September much cooler than the previous five years when sargassum became a problem. The cool temperatures enhanced nutrient levels and the growth and persistence of our macrocystis or giant kelp through summer and fall. There was very little sargassum observed during the fall and early winter. Possible reasons may include reduced light levels due to the thick native kelp canopy or the cooler water temperatures directly affecting the growth of sargassum. However, as ocean temperatures increase due to global climate change, the advantage will shift towards the invasive species. The negative impacts of this invader are not limited to the ecological effects on the native species in our kelp forest ecosystems. It has economic consequences as well. Scuba training is hampered when instructors can't find clear areas to teach in. Underwater navigation is affected by the dense growth. Divers may become entangled in this stringy alga. And the release of sexual products, plant fragments, and organics decreases visibility during winter, normally our best season for diving. Some dive instructors have stopped bringing their classes to Catalina during winter because of it. Concern has also been expressed that those mainland divers who come to Casino Point may transfer reproductive components to the waters they dive on the mainland, thus spreading the alien alga there. Catalina is also a major destination for boaters and anglers. Recently, a City of Avalon Harbor patrol boat was temporarily incapacitated when fragments of this seaweed clogged the strainer in the engine's cooling system and the engine overheated. Such rescue vessels and visiting boats could be impacted. Anglers may also lose fishing tackle due to entanglement in this seaweed and game fish such as white sea bass may be affected due to the radical change in their nearshore habitats. Warnings were issued by scientists such as Dr. Kathy Ann Miller of the UC Herbarium and Dr. Jack Engel of the Tatman Foundation when this alga was first discovered. A Sargassum Horneri working group was formed, but apparently no action was taken. The window of opportunity to eradicate this invader entirely may have already passed. However, that does not mean it cannot be controlled in specific sites like the Casino Point Dive Park, which was just chosen as one of the region's new Marine Protected Areas, or MPAs, adding urgency to the need for action. Obviously, an MPA with a prolific exotic species that outcompetes the natives has far less value than one containing a biodiverse native community. Although the young plants are the best ones to target, they are much more difficult to remove. Mature plants have a single, narrow stipe raised above the tiny holdfast and can easily be clipped off. Two years ago, a dive instructor cleared a portion of Catalina's dive park of the sargassum. As a kelp forest ecologist, I informally monitored the area and found relatively little regrowth during that season. 
Currently, even though it is not a native species, an individual diver is limited to removing only 10 pounds of wet weight per day and must have a valid fishing license to do so. We are currently asking the California Department of Fish and Game and its commissioners to expedite a permit to remove this non-native alga on an annual basis. Numerous local and mainland divers are willing to volunteer to do this. By allowing this project to proceed, the Casino Point Dive Park could become a test site for the implementation of local control efforts and also a location for scientific study of this invasive species. If we can control it here and explore new ways of dealing with it, perhaps they can be extended to other MPAs and the Southern California coastline in general for the benefit of all. Wireweed, known scientifically as Sargassum muticum, is another native of Asian waters found in Southern California. This alga is a fairly innocuous seaweed in Japan, reaching lengths of three to six feet. However, in other regions it is invaded, wireweed may reach 33 to 50 feet in length. Unlike Sargassum horneri, this species is a perennial and may live three to four years. Its physical appearance may be highly variable in response to environmental conditions. The disc-shaped holdfast attaches to the substrate using a mucopolysaccharide or long-chain sugar. Several flat blades usually develop near the holdfast. The central stipe has alternating branches perpendicular to it. The round float bladders may occur individually or in clusters. The small blades may have smooth edges or be toothed like holly leaves. This species frequents sheltered to partially exposed habitats. Up in British Columbia, it seems to be restricted to shallow depths of three to six feet. But in Southern California, it is common in 13 to 26 feet and found to depths of nearly 80 feet. It tolerates a wide range of salinities and temperatures from 50 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. This alga reproduces both sexually and through fragments drifting with the currents. Fertile branches have reproductive structures about a half an inch long, housing both male and female conceptacles. They may be self-fertile. The eggs remain attached to the receptacle by a tiny stalk for a few days before dropping off near the parent. Dispersal across distances is possible through the drifting plants which may survive quite a long time. Sargassum mutica may have reached British Columbia and the Pacific Northwest as early as 1902, probably an oyster spat imported from Japan. It spread from its initial region of introduction, aided by the south-flowing California current, reaching Puget Sound in 1948, Crescent City in 1963, Catalina in 1970, and Bahia Tortugos in Baja in 1985. It has also invaded European waters. Like its relative, this sargassum is an aggressive invader that can outcompete native species, including giant kelp, especially in denuded areas. However, over the last 40 years, it seems to have achieved a balance with our native species. Another exotic Asian seaweed in our waters is Undaria panatifida known as wakami in Japan. It can be identified by the prominent rib on the blade and the sporophylls near the base of the stipe. It is a very prolific alga and may reach lengths of nine feet. Wakami is native to the cold temperate waters of Japan, Korea, and China. It grows best in temperatures below 54 degrees Fahrenheit and begins to die when temperatures exceed 68. It prefers somewhat sheltered habitats and depths from the intertidal to about 80 feet. This alga has two different life stages, the large sporophyte seen here and the microscopic gametophyte. Individual sporophytes, which are present from late winter to early spring, may release as many as a hundred million spores over a single season from their convoluted sporophylls. 
The tiny gametophyte grows during the colder months and produces sperm or eggs. Wakami is one of the hundred worst invasive species in the world. It quickly colonizes barren areas and spreads through the release of millions of spores. It may also be dispersed in bilge water or attached to large ships, which is believed to be the way it entered Southern California waters in 2000. Eradication is difficult due to the tiny gametophyte stage. It does not seem to have spread much here on Catalina, perhaps due to our warmer temperatures. Wakami invaded European waters through introduction in oyster spat and is also a problem in Australia, New Zealand, and South American waters. As globalization and international shipping continues, the introduction of such exotic weeds will continue to be a problem in the United States, Asia, and Europe.